There he is. You hear me okay, Mike? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, well, we will get started, and we'll start first with Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hi, Mike. It, it seems like you're really comfortable in these one-on-one -on -one matchups using your hands. Why and how has that become a, a place of strength for you as a pass rusher? Uh, kind of just preparation throughout the week, you know, studying my opponent and uh, understanding his tendencies and understanding how I can defeat those tendencies. So working throughout the week and, you know, just kind of trusting yourself. And kind of like I said, preparation is a big part of what happens on game day and the results. So all that goes into preparation, how we work on the D-line, how we work as a unit. Let's go next to Kieran Kornacki. Go ahead, Kieran. Oh, I'm there we sorry. Go. The unmute button <laughs> gives me trouble. Anyway, wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, right now you guys have the number one seed. Right now you guys are on top of the hill. Is there a different mentality? You know, it's one thing to get there, but now you guys are 12 and one. Everybody's aiming for you to, to just keep that spot, you know, and run the table so you guys can get that by. What's the mentality with this team? Do you even think about that? Is that something that you need to be aware of? Well, I mean, when we go against an opponent and when when it's a, a game, we, we throw the records out the window because, you know, any given Sunday, somebody can be beat. So we look our opponents in the eye and we respect them. And uh, we understand that we are 12 and 1 and we have a lot to lose. But we understand that an opponent can be just as good as us. You know, um, there's a lot of good teams in the NFL that can, you know, win these days. And um, just understanding that we got to come in each week and work the same way we work since week one and keep understanding that if we keep getting better and stacking these weeks, we're going to get our ultimate goal. Let's go next to Adam Orduna. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, uh, Mike. Uh, so being a rookie, you guys have already played in some big games. You faced Tom Brady and Tampa Bay, and then you guys are now getting ready to play New Orleans. Uh, you played in a lot of big games in college as well. Do you ever just sit there and think about the fact that you're playing against a team like the Saints, like Tom Brady and, yeah, you know, no games are guaranteed. What, what is your thought process when you look on the schedule and you say, man, we're playing some of these historic teams and you get to go do that on Sunday? Well, it's a really special uh, feeling because, you know, not everybody in the world get to do this and it's a really a blessing. So being able to go against those uh, big name guys and those big name teams is truly a dream come true. But understanding that those teams or those guys are out for blood and are out to uh, serve you a loss. So I, I come in each Sunday with the same energy, whether it's Tom Brady, Drew Brees, or whatever big name guys or whatever team it is. I give them guys all the same respect, and I just um, prepare for the whoever I'm going against. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Mike. Uh, I have two questions for you. One, what did you learn when you went through your injury and how that may have helped you in your return? And then what did you think as a as a group on the defensive line, what worked in leading to the four sacks against the Dolphins last mm -hmm. week? Well, uh, I'll start off with the D-line. Uh, I think our preparation was big, man. You know, we went into this, to this game knowing what our assignment was, what our goals were. And we knew that when we came to the game, we had to hit those assignments and execute the games, execute our rushes and, you know, just show up when our number is called and be ready when our opportunity is given to us. And um, for the second question, what was your second question? Can you repeat that again? Yep, one sec. Let me unmute him here, Mike. Oh, sorry about that. Let's see if I can get him. There you go, Nate. Give it a shot. Nope. There we go. How about now? <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. um, you, you played a few games uh -huh. uh, early in your season, Mike, and then you had the injury. Um, uh -huh. Just what did that lesson do for you, and, and how did that help you uh, when you came back, just from what you had saw, what you were, what you were doing earlier those first few weeks. Well, you know, there's always that you got to respect the game, man, because this game can take you out, snap of the fingers. So you know, uh, understanding that you know, any play can be my last play, any game can be my last game, any practice can be my last practice. So just coming in with the same energy, the same intensity, the same work preparation, work ethic each week, and just try to keep getting better. And you know, um, I learned a lot over the injury. I learned a lot from the vets. I learned a lot from watching the film. So all in all, I got a lot of positive out of that one negative situation. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Mike. Um, curious 
as to what your expectations were for yourself coming into your rookie season. Um, you came in as a low round draft pick in a year where there was no OTAs, no preseason, and you were coming to a, a defending Super Bowl champion. So I was curious as to what your um, expectations were coming into this season. And are, have you met those? Are you close to meeting them? Uh, uh, how, how would you put that? Okay, yeah. So um, going to this rookie season, no, I had big expectations. And the biggest expectation I had was um, gaining my teammates' trust and respect. That was the biggest thing I wanted to do because once you do that, you know, guys can trust you to be on, on the field, trust you to do your job. I want to gain the trust and the respect from the coaches because the same thing. Those guys will understand that you can do your job. They don't have to, you know, worry about if this guy's going to be on this time or if this guy's going to uh, be where he's supposed to be at that certain time. So uh, holding myself as accountable is a big thing for me. And just understanding that when I came here, I wanted to gain everybody respect, gain everybody trust so I can just make this job easier for myself and easier for everybody else by having them, you know, trust me, be out there and doing what I'm supposed to do. We'll go to Sarin for the last one. Go ahead, Sarin. Um, I, I know, uh, you know, a little bit different style between Taysom Hill and, and Lamar Jackson, right? A little more power in his run, uh, and maybe not quite as elusive as Lamar Jackson. Does that change uh, how you have to prepare? Or is it, uh, you know, the same thing? Or, you know, do you, do you have to change it up, have a more physical mindset, anything that is different when you, when you see this kind of uh, quarterback? Well, I mean, both of the quarterbacks both like to run. So um, kind of like you said, Jason has a little more power. So we got to be ready to play the power runs, the, the more of the um, core runs, the box runs, not so much of the bouncing and, you know, trying to get to the perimeter. So because uh, that's the Lamar Jackson type deal. But with him, he tried to get like between the tackles or whatever. So just preparing, kind of uh, settling down in the front seven, being ready, be aware, being situationally aware of the times he can run, times he can pull it. And just, you know, uh, be on our keys, understanding like when to be in the right place at the right time. Deshaun, can you hear us okay? Yep. All right, well, we'll get started and uh, we'll start first with Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tershawn, a um, couple questions. First, um, did you have a lot of offers when you signed with the Chiefs after the draft? And were there other teams, a lot of other teams interested? And if so, why you signed with the Chiefs? And Brad, I'll have a, another question as well. Uh, yes, sir. It was other teams interested in me. And uh, I think I chose the Chiefs. We, me and my agency, we thought it was the best uh, fit for me, like my style of play and how it was going to change from what I was doing in college. So uh, that's what really made me stick with the Chiefs. And what expectations did you have for yourself coming into your rookie season? And do you feel like you've met those and haven't met them? How, how would you uh, uh, explain that part of it? Uh, coming in, I just really want to make the team. And then uh, once I did that, see where they wanted me and how could I play? And uh, I mean, I feel like I didn't, I did some of what I want to do, not all the way accomplished yet. So that's how that worked out for me. Let's go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Tershawn. Uh, I'm curious, what's the biggest difference between what you were dealing with at S&T and now what you're facing in the pros and how have you handled that so far through your career? I um, mean, at ST, I was the guy that was going to come after. Uh, uh, now being on a team with pros, I'm not really the guy they're going to come after all the time. So uh, that helped. And then things at ST, my senior year, junior year, I was a leader on the team. So uh, right now, it's just kind of like you you back to square one when you come in freshman year of any school. So now it's just I'm trying to play with others. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hi, Turk. We, we talked to Brendan Daly the other day, and he said you've grown to the point of him and trusting you with some communication stuff. Can you detail what that entails, and then what has that meant for you in, in this early on in your career? I mean, just being able to get that role as a rookie, I mean, it's something that you – you can be not, it's still something to stay humble about, but I mean, I, I appreciate it. And I see that my coach trusts me and then uh, really just on the field, we just rolling with each other. So kind of just trying to make sure everybody get pressure on the QB when I'm out there. Uh, last two, we'll go Karen and then Matt. Go ahead, Karen. Unmute. Unmute. Yes. All right. <laughs> Want to ask you just a little bit about the idea of being 
12 and one, you know, being the team everybody wants, getting their best shot. How do you guys not necessarily stay motivated, but always have your guard up when you've got this, you know, you're the best right now, top seed in the league. You want to stay there. You want to get that by. How do you finish the season just maintaining that level and doing everything it takes to win? Um, is there a secret to handling that kind of success? I think we use it as motivation. Uh, everybody in here always comes in on, on game days and days that we work in, uh, everybody working. We're trying to get each other better through the season and uh, really just use it, like I said, using it as motivation. So we, I mean, every little detail that, that you can think about, the coaches are detailing up every day. And uh, when you make a mistake on the field, you know, we just throwing it away. But the next play, we trying to make sure that it's just not showing up again. And that's how we've really been keeping it so far, just paying attention to details and striving for greatness each week. We'll go last to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Derek, you've talked about the importance of the, the Shrine Bowl was for you it's coming out and, and being able to get noticed. With that game canceled this year, but the, you know there are some other all-star games. Any advice to players in your spot who are maybe from small schools who or need to, get, or want to be able to get their notice and try and get their names out there? I mean, uh, the next big thing for them would be the combine. So, I mean, you'll have to focus in on making sure your number's right because that's the next big thing thing after we go to uh, bowl games, you usually start pre-draft training. So, I mean, being there with pre-draft training, you just got to, like, really make sure your numbers are the best because that's the next thing they're going to look at. And then, uh, yeah, I, your film, your film should show something already <laughs> and by this time. All right, we'll start first with Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Patrick, good afternoon. I want to take you back to the pre-draft process in 2017. Uh, Sean Payton was one of many head coaches to fly down to Lubbock to work out with you. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from the time that you spent with him? And Brad, I'll have another question. Yeah, I mean, he's he, first off, I mean, he's a great, great guy. I think that was the first thing you you kind of see. I mean, the way he talks to you, the way he coaches, um, he, he can tell he truly cares about the guys that he coaches and he wants to make them uh, better. And then that day he wanted to, wanted to get everything he could out of me and, and see where I was at, but also it helped me improve in every way possible. And so uh, uh, you can see by how he coaches. I mean, obviously he's offensive uh, genius, but he also uh, really is respected by his guys in his locker room. And, and since you just mentioned the, the offensive genius part, well, and I'm sure he didn't give you the entire playbook, but like some of the throws he asked you to make, what did, his, what did you think of his creativity? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, if you, Obviously, then you could see all how all the stuff he's done for years and years has had success. And then when you watch them on film, you can see all the different uh, the game plan plays that they have as, as long as their base plays. And they do a great job of executing and really getting the ball to their playmakers. And uh, I think it's very similar to what we do here. And um, it, it's pretty cool to, to be able to go against another uh, great coach like that. Go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Um, something's kind of similar, but, you know, Peyton said after the draft that you were the guy that, that they were targeting. Could you sense that? I mean, I mean, how much could you sense other teams' interest in you and how real it was and specifically with the Saints? Yeah, with the Saints, I, I didn't sense it as much. Uh, I know I def definitely had a good workout, um, but uh, I didn't sense, sense that they were, they were going to pick me, obviously, with Drew still being there and, and the success that he still had to, th to this day. And so um, – uh, at the same time, I think they got a, a great player in Marshawn Lattimore, so I'm sure they're they're still they're still happy with that. And uh, uh, it, it's just crazy how stuff works out that we're in this position that we are in now. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Patrick. Um, it doesn't look like Drew Brees is going to play, but I'm still curious your thoughts as someone who's finishing his third year as a starting quarterback. What kind of appreciation do you have for a guy like Drew, who's done it for such a long period of time. I mean, year after year after year. What kind of appreciation do you have for that? And Brad, I'll have one quick follow-up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 100%. I mean, obviously him being from Texas uh, and, then, and then going to the, the Chargers, uh, dealing with adversity there, and then going to the Saints and just been consistently at the top of the game for year in and year out. I mean, it is truly special to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and uh, to be able to consistently produce every single year. I mean, um, Hopefully we, we get to go up against them or I get to go up against them. But if not, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to face them at some other time. Cause uh, it's uh, it, you want to play against those great quarterbacks that you watched growing up that were kind of uh, guys that you looked up to in the way they play the game. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I mean, you're, you're just trying to win a game Sunday, regardless of who their quarterback is. But is it a little bit disappointing if he doesn't play on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a little bit. I mean, obviously, I have a ton of respect for Taysom and the way he's he's been able to play and produce. I mean, I watched him when I was in college and then, and then now in the NFL. I mean, the way he's able to be a – uh, go out there, throw the ball, be a quarterback, but also be one of the best athletes on the field is truly special. But uh, yeah, I mean, you want to go up against those great quarterbacks that have done it uh, for a long time and another Texas guy and a guy that I've met a couple of times and, and it's just a great guy. And so uh, uh, regardless, we're playing against a great football team and uh, we'll be ready to go. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Patrick, Andy said on Monday that he feels like you guys are really close to being where you want to be to roll into the playoffs. And I was curious what you think maybe you could tune up or the offense could tune up in these final three weeks before you guys go on to the push to repeat. I think it's just about being consistent uh, for a full a full four quarters. Uh, we've had spans in every single game where we've been able to do what we want and put points on the board and execute the offense at a high level. But it seems like there's, there's one span or there's one little area that we don't execute on uh, every single game. And so just trying to be consistent as, as, as we possibly can. Uh, and, we'll, and what better test than going up against a, one of the best defenses in the league uh, in the New Orleans Saints and being able to go out there and, and put up uh, what, what we, we're going to see when we get to the playoffs and then and maybe in the Super Bowl. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Patrick, you're in the midst of having a historic season when it comes to flexing teams that blitz you. Uh, I'm just wondering, third season in, what you may have noticed about yourself or what you can sort of see that gives you a better advantage this year than in previous years when you do see a blitz come your way. Yeah, I just I just take those, those protection meetings and those uh, protection calls seriously. I think that's the biggest thing. I want to know as much as possible at the line of scrimmage before the snap. And I want to be protected and know I'm protected. And when I'm not, know when I, where to get the ball out to and where my hots are um, and, and adjustments are. And so uh, that's something that I, I didn't know as much when I first got here. Um, I kind of just relied on just filling it out and throwing throwing to the open guy. But now knowing those rules, I'm able to get the ball to my hands. And uh, whenever you get it to those guys in space and they're one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one coverage, they make a lot of big plays happen. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Pat, you mentioned um, Marshawn Lattimore earlier as far as just a player that the Saints got that's a good player. Um, what do you see from him? What stands out on film? And what do you have to watch out for if he's going to be traveling with Hill this weekend? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a great cornerback. I mean, he, he's not only physical, he can run, um, and, he, and he's very smart. And he recognizes plays. And so they do a lot of different uh, coverages. Uh, they play man, they play zone, uh, they blitz. They do all the different type of stuff that you need in a great defense. And they have a lot of great players over here. I mean, him and, and others in that secondary and in that D-line and those linebackers. And so uh, uh, for us, it's going to be a great test. And we have to go out there and execute at a high level if we want to find a way to win a football game. Let's go next to Steve Weish. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, hey, Patrick. You just talked about the all three levels part. And I'm going to hit their front. You know, when you see some of the things they do from Cam Jordan to Demario Davis, how important or how difficult is it to kind of diagnose what they're trying to do pre-snap? Yeah, I think uh, the way they're, they're able to interchange, I mean, those linebackers, those D linemen, uh, DB safeties, Malcolm Jenkins, all those guys can really interchange and guard different guys and as well as blitz and rush the passer. So it's a great challenge kind of trying to figure out what their game plan is for that week, uh, who they want to put on who, who they want pressure in the quarterback. And uh, you have to do a good job of recognizing that quickly in order to, to get the ball to your hands and, and figure out a way to have success against a really good defense. Uh, we've got three left. We'll go right down the line, starting with Lindsey Jones. Go ahead, Lindsey. Hey, Patrick. Um, so yesterday, you probably saw that the NFL announced that they will not be requiring any sort of postseason bubbles, localized bubbles, or a bigger bubble. But it could be, uh, but teams or players could do it on their own. Is that something that you guys might consider as you guys head into the postseason, um, whether to protect yourselves from potentially losing position group, or also your families knowing that you do have you know, a pregnant fiance at home. Yeah, well, as far as um, as a whole team, I think we do a good job at the facility of, of keeping guys separate, wearing our masks, doing those the different stuff to keep the protocols right and try to, if someone does test positive, isolate that person, everything like that. Um, but as far as going home, you have to have, you have, you have, to have uh, that confidence in your teammates that they're going to do everything the right way and they understand what's important and they understand that we have to uh, be available in order if we want to be the best football team at the end of the year. Um, and so for me, that's, that's, that would be what I'm doing already. And that's leaving the facility, going straight home, have my 
little group of me, Brittany and Jackson, and, uh, and you're really keeping it to that. And you have to know what the people around you are doing. And it's kind of your own responsibility to make sure you're available for your teammates in the long run. Go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. And Brad, I'll have a quick follow-up. Uh, first of all, uh, Patrick, I know I've asked you about your own statistical accomplishments and everything, and, and that doesn't seem to be something you focus on. But do you have your eye on some of the things Travis Kelsey's doing? Is it something in your back of mind? He's coming up on He's going to blow through the, the, the tight end receiving yardage record. He's got a shot. Uh, he's pacing for his last six games to get to the receptions record. Is that something that you're aware of that you look at that you have in the back of your head that you guys maybe talk about uh, you know, in meetings and when you're hanging out? Uh, I mean, we, we never talk about it. I mean, I don't know if that's baseball superstitious or whatever. I mean, I see it on, I see it on Twitter and stuff like that, um, but I try to stay away from all that. I, we just focus on going out there and winning football games, and uh, uh, it works out how it works out. Some days it's Tyreek, some days it's Travis, some days it's Sammy. So, I mean, we, we got guys everywhere, and we just go out there and try to execute, and whoever's open's open. All right, and then a uh, follow-up kind of on the, on the blitz conversation. You, I don't know if I forget, I forget if it was at the end of last year or the year before, but when you were on the shop and one of the things you said there was, uh, you know, I want to get to that stage where I'm Tom Brady, where I see the whole field, where it's just reactionary. Where are you in terms of, of getting to that point uh, now, you know, wrapping up, heading towards the end of a third year as a starter? Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel more comfortable every single year, every single game that, that I'm out there. I mean, uh, even if you look back at last week, they gave us some unscouted stuff, and I was able to pull back from what the New England Patriots had, uh, Patriots had done to us uh, in years past and, and being able to uh, find ways to get completions and for, to get the protections right. So, I mean, I feel more comfortable the more experience I get. Um, you, that's, how, that, that's how it is this quarterback uh, position. And so I'll try to keep improving my body so I can keep my, my body as, as high as my mind is and uh, make sure that I'm ready to go and, and better and better every single start I'm out there. We'll go last to Steve Walls. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Patrick, uh, I know Saran just asked you about Kelsey, but I'm, I'm hoping you can uh, answer this for me. Uh, his, his name is being mentioned in, in the offensive player of the year discussions from media and, and also fans. And I know it's still early, but you even mentioned it on Twitter last week. What are your thoughts on, on that? And what is your pitch to the AP for him to win an, an award that a tight end has never won? I mean, if you look at history and look at the seasons that tight ends have had, I mean, he's got to have one of the best as far as catching the ball and being a playmaker and in the offense. And so I think that that speaks for itself, as well as, I mean, if you watch the way he blocks for other guys, I mean, it's truly a special season by a tight end. Um, and I mean, not even a tight end, just a player, just a game changer. And so, uh, uh, I mean, that that's the pitch in itself.